Increasingly, we are able to get our computers, phones and other mobile devices to perform various tasks for us by just telling them to do something. This type of voice controlled user interface is hugely useful to us from a number of perspectives. It allows us to interact with our technology in the way that is most natural to us, talking, while also leaving our hands and eyes free to focus on other tasks like driving, reading reports, watching the kids, or any number of other things that we don't want to be distracted from in order to carry out a simple task. Sure, sometimes the computer gets it wrong, but a lot of the time it also gets it right, which is really amazing when you think about what a computer, phone, or other device has to do to turn human speech into words. Turn sound waves, which are little more than tiny changes in air pressure that happen really fast, into language. Computer speech recognition is very complicated and has a long history of development to get us where we are today. But here we break down the basic things a computer has to do to understand your spoken words. Sound comes into your ear or a microphone as changes in air pressure, a continuous sound wave. The computer takes a measurement of that wave at one point in time, stores it and then measures it again and repeats this process to get a picture of what the sound wave looks like. To get a good approximation of a speech wave, the computer has to take a measurement at least 8,000 times a second, but it works better if it takes one 44,100 times a second. That's more times each second than your heart beats in three days. This process is known in technical terms as digitization at eight kilohertz or 44.1 kilohertz. The numbers here correspond to the number of measurements per second. And the greater the frequency of these measurements, the more data is recorded and the more accurate the picture of the sound wave the computer has. And all this has to be done in the blink of an eye as you're speaking. And in the end, only gives a picture of the sound wave. Next, the computer has to figure out what's going on in that wave. When the computer takes measurements of air pressure changes to form a sound wave, it doesn't know which ones are caused by speech and which are caused by passing cars, rustling fabric, or the hum of hard drives. To zero in on just the useful sounds, for example the speech, a variety of mathematical operations are performed on the digitized sound wave to filter out the stuff that doesn't look like what we expect from speech. This is why you might notice that your mobile device's speech recognition is less effective in a crowded restaurant than say in your office. There are a lot of other sounds happening in the restaurant that are creating noise in the sound wave. So once the computer has filtered out the noise from the sound wave, next it has to pick out the parts of the sound wave that represent different speech sounds corresponding to the different sounds that make up our words. A sound wave from speech is actually a very complex mix of multiple waves coming at different frequencies. Subtle differences in the sound wave, like the particular frequencies, how they change and how strongly those frequencies are coming through matter a lot to the human ear and make a big difference in telling the difference between say an ah sound and an e sound, which is easy for you and I, but is in fact a rather complex task for a computer. More mathematical operations transform the complex wave into a numerical representation of the important features needed to differentiate the various sounds. With the sounds in the wave identified, next the computer looks at small chunks of the digitized sound, one after the other, and guesses what speech sound each chunk shows. There are about 40 speech sounds, or phonemes in English. The computer has a general idea of what each of them should look like because it's been trained on a large collection of examples. After determining the chunks of sound, or phonemes, next the computer has to determine which possible words could be made up of these phonemes. The computer has a big list of words, including the different ways they can be pronounced. Using this, it makes educated guesses about what words are being spoken by splitting up the string of phonemes into strings of permissible words. If the computer sees the sequence hang 10, it can determine that it shouldn't split into hey inkton because inkton won't find a good match in the dictionary. After determining which words are most likely to be in the speech wave that has just been recognized, the computer still has more work to do. As it has only made an educated guess at which words are present, it still needs to be sure what's in there before doing anything. So it must determine the most likely sequence of words based on how people actually talk. Unlike the written word, there are no word breaks in a speech stream. It's just one continuous stream of sounds with the occasional pause. The computer has to figure out where to put word breaks by finding strings of phonemes that match valid words. There can be multiple guesses about what words make up the speech stream, but not all of them will make good sequences of words. 
what do cats like for breakfast could be just as good a guess as what are gas like for brick vast, if words are the only consideration. The computer applies models of how likely one word is to follow the next in order to determine which word string is the best guess. These language models have been derived from statistical analysis of huge collections of data called corpora, which are derived from all sorts of sources, including the internet. But the more information you want to use, the more processing power you need, and the more time it takes to figure it out. Once the computer has decided which guesses to go with, it can finally take action. In the case of dictation software, it will print the guess to the screen. In the case of a customer service phone line, it will try to match the guess to one of its preset menu items. In the case of a virtual assistant like Siri, it will make a call, look up something on the internet, or try to come up with an answer to match the guess. We're also seeing more and more modern applications of speech software to authenticate users in secure systems using your unique voice print so the system knows it's you issuing the command. As anyone who has used speech recognition software knows, mistakes do happen. All the complicated statistics and mathematical transformations might not prevent recognized speech from coming out as recognized speech, but for a computer to pluck either one of these phrases literally out of the air is still pretty incredible.